Hello, I'm Fatima Behrad and in this tutorial I'm gonna talk about medical image pre-processing. Like my previous tutorials, I use Brad's dataset as an example dataset and I write my Python code on Google Colab. In this video, I'll show you how to crop, rescale and normalize images. Also in the final part, I'll talk about bias correction. So let's begin. First, we have to connect to Google Drive, install required libraries and import all libraries that we need. Then extract our dataset and define this function for reading images. I explained all these steps in the previous tutorial. Before I crop images using Python, let me tell you how to do that. This is the size of each image in Brad's dataset, and here we want to crop image to have this size. In order to do that, you need to specify the start and the end index of each dimension. Well, I want to crop image with one condition. Each image should contain tumor, so let's say our tumor is located here. In this occasion, we just need to extract the center of tumor, then we divide 128 by 2 and calculate our indices. But we have some exceptions too. For example, if tumor was here, we couldn't calculate its end like previous slide, because now it's bigger than image size. So here, its end would be image size minus 1, and its start would be its end minus 128. Similarly, when tumor is here, we just consider x start equals 0 and xn equals x start plus 128. But what about random crop? Just divide your region of interest by 2, here we get 64, and consider this space at the center of image, which is at a distance of 64 from each side of the image. Then we need to choose a random number in this area, like this, and use this calculation. Even if the random number was here, it wouldn't cause any problems. There is a very useful library called PyRadiomics, which helps you to extract radiomics features. I use this library to extract the center of tumor. As you can see, I have installed it here, and now I import feature extractor. To define an extractor, we need to call radiomics feature extractor. By default, all features in all feature classes, such as GLCM features or shape features, are enabled. So we need to disable all of them, as we just need the center of mass. Finally, using execute, we generate our features. Also, we have disabled all features. This result contains many features, so here we need to extract what we want. Now let's check the result. And now, as I explained, we use this center to crop image. Just simply implement what I said in the slides. We have three different situations and we need to consider all of them. Now let's see what our function returns. Let's visualize the results to see what happened. As you can see, we have cropped our image successfully and the tumor is at the center of our image. Before I talk about rescaling images, let me show you the histogram of two images in our dataset. This helps you to understand why do we need to rescale images. As you can see, our images have different scaling. Let's zoom to see the histograms better. 
Here I ignore the intensity voxels as they show the background. Then we choose an appropriate range for X and Y based on our plots. Now our plot is much clearer. So we use rescaling when our images have different scaling. Rescaling will change the spread of your data as well as the position of your data points. However, the shape of your distribution won't be changed. I use Simplicity Gate Library to rescale images. To do that, first I create a filter called Rescale Intensity Image Filter. This filter applies a pixel-wise linear transformation to the intensity values of input image pixels. Also, we have to define the minimum and maximum values that the output image should have. Finally, using Execute, we apply our filter. Now let's plot our histograms again and see the difference. Let's zoom again. As you can see, now both of them have the same scaling. In this tutorial, I explained the most common intensity normalization techniques. Min density normalization and min max normalization. When we perform min density normalization, we normalize all input images to have zero min and unit standard deviation. We don't usually consider the zero intensity voxels in the calculation especially when we have MRI images, because we don't want to normalize the brain area or any other organisms with the intensity of the voxels around them. So first, I omit zero intensity voxels, then calculate mean and STD, and use them for normalization. In the second technique, we normalize the voxel values so that each voxel has a value between 0 and 1. To do that, we need to calculate the minimum and the maximum value in each image and use them for normalization. In order to check the results, I rescale the image that we have cropped earlier and give it to our functions. Now we can check what happened to our histograms. Let's zoom to see the histograms better. As you can see the distributions are the same but they have different rings. The left one is between 0 and 1 and the right one has 0 mean and unit standard deviation. Now let's talk about bias field correction. Bias field signal is a low frequency and very smooth signal that crops MRI images, especially those produced by old MRI machines. The N4 bias field correction algorithm is a very popular method for correcting this signal. In order to use this algorithm, we employ Simplify Ticket Library. Here, the primary input is required to have a type of either SITK float 32 or SITK float 64, so we need to change the type. Then we should define our filter and apply it using execute function. Let's see what happened. This is our histogram before we apply M4 bias correction filter. Let's zoom to see the histograms better. This is the histogram of our corrected image. And now we can compare it with the previous one.
Also, you can visualize your image to see the difference. But I don't recommend it because in many cases, you can't see the difference by your eyes. So, histogram is a better option. If you need any further information about this filter, visit this website. Well, this is the end of this tutorial. Just remember that you can find this code on my GitHub account. If you found this video useful, please press like and if you have any questions, just ask me. Thank you.